Well, welcome to a huge update uh, on the work that we've been doing over the past years on the M1 product. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second, but I, I want to give uh, this some perspective uh, in terms of the history of investing as I have lived it since I've lived it for about 60 years now. But I can say from all of my experience that today, almost everything that we do is so much more investor oriented than when I came into the industries in the 1960s. The load funds were charging eight, what they called eight and a half percent loads, but they were really 9.3% loads uh, of the money that you actually got invested. That was a commission, came right off the top, never to be seen again. And of course, the the high expenses of mutual funds, operating expenses in those days. And, and then along comes uh, about a decade later after I started, uh, along comes the, the the index fund and John Bogle's work. And we all know that uh, the industry did everything they can to make it a thumbs down on Bogle. <laughs> they, they called it Bogle's folly. And, and it was a, 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 almost a bit of a miracle that the index fund actually took off at that time. But John Bogle was able to convince the trustees of Vanguard, even though the offering had been a complete failure, the initial offering, to let it go, let it give it time to show what it can do. And and it not only did what John Bogle thought it would do, but the low expenses of indexes, the broad diversification of indexes, all of that came home to impact the rest of the industry. And by the way, I think it's fascinating that at that very moment that Bogle was working on his project, Charles Schwab was working on discounting the uh, the commissions uh, that were being charged uh, to investors. And that too was a huge breakthrough uh, in terms of, of things getting better for the investor. So today, we have index funds in some cases that have zero operating expenses, zero commission to get in, zero commission to get out. Uh, and, and, and of course, we have not only is that true with mutual funds, but we also have commission-free purchase and sale of securities like ETFs that now uh, you can get not only this is really magic. You can get very lower expenses, very cheap or no cost to get in and to get out, and tax management within that ETF that that will benefit likely from the way, at least the way it's set up now under present tax regulations. They are much cheaper than the traditional open-ended mutual fund. So things keep getting better and better. And at the same time, unfortunately, ways of, of promoting things that are not in your best interest are, are getting more efficient with the use of the internet uh, and, and all of the, the, the tricks and traps of how organizations are able to sell and to motivate you to do things that are not in your best interest. So we at the foundation, Chris, Daryl, myself, and the others who, who, who have worked, uh, uh, Paul Hayes, all of these folks uh, are interested in one thing, because none of us get paid. <laughs> we're not interested in how much we're making off of you. We are focused on how you can make the most that you can make. And so that doesn't mean that all of our dreams for you, all of our hope that the future will look like the past so that the, that the premiums will all flow to you. Sure, we want all of that, 
But the reality is, and you know this, one, that we're not giving personal advice. So this is supposed to be educational. It's a teaching moment. But th that personal advice that is so important is about you understanding you and what your risk tolerance is, what your need for return is, all of that kind of information that is not ours to create for you, but for you to figure out and understand about yourself. And of course, what we're hoping will happen out of all of that is that you will be able, by using index funds, by, by, by using uh, exchange-traded funds, by, by being able to do all the good things you can do today, that it will, you will become as good as a professional advisor. And what we're going to talk about today, as far as I'm concerned, is a huge step toward looking more and more like what a professional advisor is able to do for you. And that is to be able to manage a portfolio that would be very similar to managing a portfolio if you came into a firm like my old investment advisory firm, where people take care of everything for you. Well, we're going to find out how much of everything they can help you with. But again, I got to highlight, we are not your personal advisor. And all the things that people in the industry say about the, the, the future is not likely to look exactly like the past. It may not even come close for all we know. And that we can't guarantee that there's going to be a certain return to, that will flow out of, uh, out of these investments, out of the information that we provide. And oh, by the way, we have a, a, a new relationship with the people at M1 that is very important for you to know about. Chris may talk about this. And by the way, I'm going to stop talking pretty quick here and just let Chris go because he's got a bunch of great information to share with you today. But I think it's important for you to know M1 is a brokerage firm. And M1 uh, as a firm, has looked to people like us uh, on the internet uh, and other places, but mostly on the internet from everything that I know, to look for people like us to educate others about what they have to provide. And that while we do that, if you, in fact, through a link on our site, go to M1, our foundation will receive, if you become a, an account of uh, some amount, I think it's a $1,000 or more, but that we will get a, a small fee one time. Even if you put a million dollars in, the fee is going to be the same. <laughs> there's, a, there's no bonus for, uh, for, for us bringing them somebody with a lot of money but that we're going to get uh, an affiliate fee. We have the very same relationship with Amazon. And that is, if you go through our site and you buy one of their books, we get a small little fee one time uh, in exchange for that link. That's called an affiliate fee. And the, the only other affiliate fee of that kind we have is with uh, M1. But here's the interesting thing that you need to know. When I was in the investment advisory business, one of the things that was a pain in the neck was that we had somebody at our firm working full time to make sure that everybody was doing what they should in terms of compliance with the rules. And, uh, and one of the things that has transpired in the growth of M1. And Chris, you're going to you're going to correct me on this if I misstate this. But as I understand it now, whenever we do anything that has to do that brings up the the name M1 in the discussion, 
we actually have to run that through the the compliance department at M1. It's just like being back in the business. And it is a bit of a pain in the neck, but that is what M1 is, is, is doing today to make sure that people like us are not misrepresenting M1. And I think that's a really smart thing for them to do. And, uh, um, but that is, that is a new part of our relationship uh, with the M1. We have to go through compliance, but we will, because we, we, we really think this is a, a, a product that's worth considering in terms of helping you as a do-it-yourself investor uh, do it better. And my hope is that Chris will allow a little time for us not only to discuss M1, but to talk about another provider that we don't have any kind of an affiliate relationship with, but another provider of a, of a similar kind of product that, uh, that I think that you will also find of interest. So uh, I am, as always, uh, thrilled uh, to introduce Chris Patterson, our Director of Research. He is the man that brought us the best in class ETF uh, list of uh, of ETFs that that we recommend in our portfolios, uh, and he is the man who created the two funds for life, the combination of uh, the, the the target date fund and the, and a small cap value or some other fund to go along with it to give you an opportunity for a long-term improvement in your return. And he's also the man who has worked hard on uh, understanding M1 and helping to build, in fact, not helping, but building the pies. Uh, I, I hesitate to bring up that word because uh, uh, as many of you know, uh, I've been on a diet for for <laughs> uh, over 20 years and it's just the mention of a pie makes me hungry, but but um, Chris going to talk about those pies and how they can be good for you, not bad for you. So, uh, Chris, thank you so much for being with us here today to, to 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 explain the latest information on M1 and to take us uh, into a, a competitor that they have that I think people will enjoy uh, learning about. So, uh, take it away, my friend. Well, thank, thanks, Paul, for the gracious introduction. I, uh, it's always a pleasure to work with you because you make me sound like I'm smarter than I am. Well, uh, you are. But, <laughs> I, and uh, thanks for the mention of pies. This is my favorite time of year when you can get a peach blueberry pie. There's this narrow window when you can get those two together. And <laughs> Susanna spoiled me. She made two of them this year. So oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's my favorite pie, because uh, maybe partly because you can only really get them fresh at that one time of year. <laughs> So, you know, why why do we work with M1? Some of our followers and, and audience will remember years and years ago, we did some stuff with Motif and, you know, that morphed and now we're working with M1. Fundamentally, uh, the reason I like the M1 platform is that it was founded by somebody who understood that they really wanted to be a a do-it-yourself investor, and they wanted an automated platform that would help you do that. What does it take to be a do-it-yourself investor? You need to set an allocation, and then you need to have contributions that come in, help nudge the portfolio back towards that allocation, and you need to occasionally be able to rebalance. And ideally, you do that with a click of a button, and that's what M1 Finance lets you do. It lets you automate all of that and become a very disciplined do-it-yourself investor with a an allocation you set up front and you decide to live with. And they, they call that allocation a pie and you can combine pies to have your total allocation. And so we have worked with M1 creating shortcut pies over the, over the years to match some of our portfolios because we thought it, was a really good tool, especially for a young investor coming in who didn't have a lot of money because up until recently it was practically free. 
Uh, now they have in recent days shifted their business model to where if you have less than $10,000, you pay a $3 per month platform fee. So uh, you'll have to decide for yourself whether it's worth it for all of the convenience that they provide. Uh, I, I think it's actually a pretty good deal when you think of what they're doing. And hopefully a young saver will pass that $10,000 savings point early in their saving career and it will become a non-issue. Um, but that is a factor. It's something to consider now for a young investor is that, that it does cost some money to get these benefits. But, uh, you know, once you have set up your account, it really does help you be a good do it yourself investor. And I think the best way to help people understand what we used to have and what we're going to have and 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 what we changed is go to the website. So let me share my share my screen here. And by the way, while you're sharing that screen, Chris, that three dollar platform fee. Uh, that is going to, if you have, for example, uh, three different accounts on the platform uh, with three different portfolios, that $3 is the, is the total. They're not having to pay $3 per account on the platform, but just to have access to the platform. Is that is that That's right? correct. Yeah, that's my understanding as well. So uh, if you had an IRA and you had a normal brokerage account, uh, it would be $3 a month in total until the combined total of those two passed $10,000. If you go to the website over here on the right hand side, we're at paulmerriman.com and you come over to portfolios and go down to M1 Finance, you'll get to the webpage where we describe M1 Finance and we have an affiliate link, and this is where you would sign up if you want to help benefit our foundation with the creation of a new account. You would click that link. It will launch a new tab, and um, then you have the opportunity to click join now, and it will ask for various pieces of information, and, and you will go through a process of signing up. So I'm not going to go through that today, but uh, that that process is like signing up for other brokerage accounts it involves a fair amount of personal information not surprisingly but uh, it it's fairly straightforward and simple and because they are set up as an online brokerage i think they do some of these online transactions a little bit smoother and a little bit better than brokerages that maybe have their roots in brick and mortar that's the advantage. The disadvantage is you don't have somebody to phone who knows your name and you don't have brick and mortar retail presence where you can walk in the door and ask questions. So it's a trade off. But uh, it, for many people, especially young people who are more comfortable doing things electronically, it may be a good trade off. So scrolling down, um, we have some descriptions about M1 finance and what it is. But the part that's really important is we have these portfolio pies down here at the bottom. And these in the past include some, included some fixed allocations to equities and fixed income, and only a subset of our sound investing pies. And the reason was that if you did all of the various combinations of equities and fixed income and all of our pies, it just got to be too many things. I see you smiling, Paul, you understand that. <laughs> yeah, it gets to be a big list. But the advantage of the M1 platform, one of the advantages is that it's actually very easy to mix pies of different types. So you can take a fixed income pie and you can take an equity pie and you can set the ratio of the amount that you want between the two pretty simply. So we've changed the pies that we provide here as shortcuts so that you have all of the sound investing equity portfolios and all of our, there's only two fixed income portfolios, either the tax deferred or taxable. And we have all of the time horizons, the five year time horizons for the Merriman aggressive target date glide path. 
So, so you now using these pies can do a lot more and I'm going to show you how. And what I did was I grabbed the instructions that are just above this and I, I clipped them and they're over here on the left hand side. And so the first thing you would do is create an account at M1 Finance. And when you create that account, it's going to log you in. And I'm going to actually go to M1 Finance right now. And I'm going to log myself in so that we can do some demos here. Okay, so now I'm logged into that account and I come back to the Paul Merriman M1 page. And once you're logged in, step two is while you're signed into your account, click one of the portfolios that you want. So I'm going to, uh, Paul, pick one. What portfolio do we want today? Well, let's talk about the ultimate buy and hold because that's the one that is the ultimate amount of work to do if you tried to do this without M1. Okay. And I've got a taxable account mm -hmm. um, set up there. So should we do the 50-50 or the 70-30 U.S. International? You know, let's, I've got 50-50. Let's look at 50-50. Okay. So I'm going to click that and it's going to take me to this web page that says a friend shared an investment strategy with you. And it's going to show you what funds are in that strategy. We use the best in class ETFs. It's going to show you some information about how it's performed in the past. It's going to show you its dividend yield, its expense ratio. And up here in the top right hand corner, step three says explore this, click on explore this pie in M1. So we're going to click that. And now because I'm logged into my account, it's going to go to a page where it says it, it shows me that same set of pies and they have the opportunity to add to portfolio. So the next step is I'm going to add that to my portfolio and I'm going to add it to this account I have called test account. So we're going to add that. And I had some other things in that test account that I'm going to delete, get rid of here. So we'll delete those. And I think when you add it, it's going to come in at 100%. And so all you have to do now is click save. And I know you're thinking, wait a minute, I don't want to invest in the 100% equities. I want a mix of equities and fixed income. That's okay. Clicking save here will not invest in it. It's just saving your work is a way to think of it. And it's going to ask you to confirm your changes. So I'm going to confirm that. And now we can go back to, M to the M1 page and we're gonna pick the fixed income portfolio we want. So it's a taxable account. I'm gonna click the taxable fixed income and we're gonna go through the same process again. We get to see what that fixed income account has done in the past, what funds it includes. Um, and then up here at the top right, we go explore this pie in M1 finance. We add it to that test portfolio. You could have added it to my individual account or whatever your account is. You're going to add it to the to the one that you want. And now here's the genius of M1 Finance. You have these two pies. Each one is made up of a bunch of individual slices. You can adjust the percentages. So what percentage fixed income would we want in this portfolio, Paul? Well, let's go 60-40, 60, 60 equity, 40 fixed income. Okay, so all I do is I type 40 here and 60 here. And there you go, you have a 60-40. And if you wanted a 50-50, it's just as easy, 50-50. So that's how simple it is. And when you click save again, um, actually, we wanted, we wanted your 60-40. We're going to go back to that. I don't want to change your strategy. You know me, I'm a little more aggressive than you. So 60-40 sounds good. All right. And then we confirm because it's a change. Okay. So now we have this pie over here in our test account that we set up. And because this account isn't funded, this doesn't look entirely complete. And what's left is for this account, and it would be true for your account if you're signing up new, is to connect a bank to set up the connection to fund this. 
to contribute some money to do a transfer and then to do a purchase and to actually uh, approve that purchase. And you also will have the option to set up automatic deposit, to set up dividend reinvesting, to have those deposits nudge your investments back to the portfolio allocation that you want. Um, all pretty simple. Now, there is another thing that's really interesting, I think, about this ability to mix things. And I'm going to go uh, back to M1 uh, or back to the M1 finance page on Merriman and come down here to the Merriman aggressive target date glide path pies. So let's say instead of 20 years to retirement or 25 years to retirement, you're actually 22 years to retirement. How would you use this mixing to take advantage, to, to approximate something that is that 22 years to retirement? Well, let's, let's just go through the exercise. So first of all, you would want both of these pies added to your, uh, your investing account. So I'm going to go back through this process where we explore the pie in N1. We're going to add it to our portfolio and we're going to add it to the test portfolio. So we're going to lose our, our earlier allocation. I'm going to delete the 6040 that we had. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to make this 100 because it won't let me out of the screen unless it says 100 total. So we're going to save that. And then we'll come back, confirm. And we'll get the 25 year, right? So we'll explore that. And we'll add it to the portfolio, put it in the test, add. Okay. And now what I said is if instead of 20, 20 years to retirement or 25 years to retirement, you're 22 years to retirement, well, then what that means is that you're more like the 20 than you are like the 25. How much more? Well, you're about 40% of the way there, right? Because each year is 20%. So that would say that you want to have 40% in the 20 years to retirement and 60% in the 25 years to retirement. And boom, now you have actually got effectively the 22 year to retirement, Merriman aggressive target date glide path allocation. So this earlier you could do using the calculator on the website, get the allocation, type in all of these numbers individually. And it, it might be slightly different because when you do it this way, you're getting a straight line between the years but it wouldn't be very much different. It'd be pretty darn close. So I think this is genius. I think being able to do this sort of thing with the Merriman aggressive target date glide pass really simplifies things. And in fact, if you were somebody using that approach, when the year comes, you know, let's say next year you're 23 years old, you don't even have to go back to the Merriman website. You just come in here and you go, oh, now I'm 23. It's, it's not 40, 60, it's 60, 40. And you keep doing that until you get at the end of that five-year period of time and you have to bring in the next one. So I, I think it's really a, a very cool way to do all of this. And it makes it a lot easier for the investors. Uh, only, so only. That's, that's really the gist of it. Yeah. Only, only an engineer would have come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that, Chris. That, but I got to understand something because the, the the moving parts of this whole process are that the people who follow our work are saving money. Yes. Uh, uh, and then they're putting this money into let, w whichever portfolio it might be there, uh, and. Uh, and if they want to rebalance, what what's what's the step to rebalance? Is that a well, another button to push? To do, to do that, I have to uh, go back to. I'm going to go to my home, and uh, I have. Uh, if I go in invest, I can go to my individual account, and uh, my individual account comes up and I have this button down here that says rebalance. 
So I could click rebalance. Mm -hmm. And it comes up and it tells me I can rebalance in the next trading window. Most people would be fine with that. Um, and that's a possible taxable event. So we'll buy and sell slices and re return your pie to its targets right away. Or you can rebalance over time with deposits. And so you can schedule a deposit to come in, right? So, so rather than sell something and then deposit a month later and have to pay tax on the gains of the sale, you could say, I'm going to, I know that I've got a sizable deposit coming in. I'm not going to rebalance tomorrow, yeah. right? I don't have a deposit coming in right now, so I'm going to rebalance. And it's got a pending rebalance up here. And that means it's going to make some trades and it's going to rebalance. And that'll probably happen this afternoon or tomorrow. And, um, uh, that that's all you have to do that's it so there is one other moving part here that's important and that is that if people are going to follow your recommendations for the best in class and it's time to rebalance and it's in a tax deferred or tax-free account so we take taxes out of the consideration here uh how how do they how do they pick up the new best in class ETFs that you're recommending if there has been a change? And by the so, way, I just want to mention you do that every two years. Okay, you come into the account and then you you have your pie over here, which is represented as just one thing because it's this set of slices that are underneath this ultimate buy and hold worldwide allocation. So to change that, you click on the arrow on the right hand side and that expands it. And now you can come in here and you can edit this allocation and you can take one of these funds so let's say we replace AVUS with SPY. So you would come in here and find, uh, oh, this is funny. I haven't updated this with the new allocation. Um, so let's, let's say, uh, which one do I have in here? Uh, I have Vanguard Total Stock Market. So I'm actually gonna replace that with AVUS. So we'll do it right now. So I would delete that because I haven't updated my individual investment in a while. And then I would add, so I'm gonna add a slice and I would come up and search for AVUS. And I add that to the basket and then I add it to the account. And now I have to set an allocation so that it totals up because right now it's uh it comes in at one so i raise that up to the original allocation amount which i believe was 11 percent or 12 percent and then i click save and it's going to say you know do you confirm these changes because this is going to trigger a sale and a purchase and uh, i am going to trigger that change. So I click confirm. And there you go. Now, that's if you want to change it one at a time. But what if I wanted to just adopt the whole new best in class set of ETFs, right? right? Okay. So to do that, I would come back and I would go to the ultimate buy and hold. This is a taxable account. And um, I like the 70-30 allocation. That's actually closer to a market cap weighted index mm -hmm. these days, mm -hmm. which is interesting. So I'm going to click that 70-30 allocation. Explore this pie. Add to a portfolio. And we're going to put that in this individual portfolio. We're going to add that. And then we're going to delete the old one and keep the new one. So the old one was that one right there. So I'm going to delete that. And we're going to make this new one 100. 
I'm going to save it. And we're going to confirm. So it's going to trigger some long-term capital gains, not very much. I'm okay with that. And uh, if I decide, no, I don't want to do that, I can come up here and I can click cancel and get rid of that pending rebalance and go back to my old ones. But I actually kind of like the idea of updating this account to all the new best in class. So here is what I probably got most excited about when, when I saw what was what was going on. I have had so many conversations with people who have looked at our sound investing portfolios and we show the use of indexes going back to 1970 uh, using the percentage in in about nine different portfolios. Now, one of those portfolios is all in the S&P 500 and another portfolio is all small cap value. So in a sense, it's really seven uh, portfolios of combinations of equity asset classes. But people get into this thought process as they look backwards uh, at, uh, at, at, at past returns, and they'll like one particular strategy because it did well in, 70, in the 70s, uh, maybe didn't do as well in the 2000 through 2009, and another one did did do so well in the 70s, but did a lot better in 2000 through 2009, and they're struggling. Which one of these should I use? Uh, what I thought might happen is that people would say, you know, I, I, I like the four fund worldwide strategy. And, and, and I like the, 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 the worldwide value portfolio that, you know, those are both very fine historically portfolios. And, and I, and I also like the simplicity of the S and P 500 small cap value. And so they might say, is it, what about if I wanted to take my, my IRA and just make it one third each in, in, in those three strategies so that when they rebalance, it would rebalance somehow back to those the the combination of those three. Can you walk us through what that would mean to do that or or is it just a pipe dream? Well, it's it's easy. It's just what we just did. So what's what's your desired portfolio? <laughs> okay, I want to be and, and and we'll not make it a third each. I want it to be twenty five percent each. Okay. One will be the two fund strategy. Got it. Another will be the worldwide value. Another will be the worldwide four funds. Is that 50-50 or 70-30? Ah, okay. All right. All right. Let's make it 70-30. Uh, let, let's, let's make uh, uh, a, another portfolio, all U.S., the four U.S. funds. Yeah, yeah. let's walk through that. Okay. So we've got the, the U.S. two fund. So I click on that. And I explore that pie and we'll just add these to the test account, add that portfolio to the test account, add and confirm. And then we do, all right, that was the first one worldwide, all value 70, 30. So we explore that, add to the portfolio, put it in the test one add and i can there's a shortcut i can just click equalize up here if i click them all i can go equalize and it'll make them 50 50. save that and then the us4 fund so we explore that Add to a portfolio, put it in test, add, select all, equalize, save, almost there. And then your last one was the worldwide four fund 7030. So we explore that pie. 
add to the test account portfolio and select all and equalize and you're done. That's so, it. So, okay, this is fantastic. Now it's been a year. It is time to rebalance. So is it now going to rebalance so that each one of these portions are going to go back to whatever the, uh, well, first of all, it, if we're in an IRA, it could theoretically be updated to have the new funds in it. Uh, and it would be updated so that you're back to that original 25% each in those four different equity strategies. Is that what you've got? Even more than that. Right. You have two allocations in the two fund. You have five allocations in the worldwide all value, four allocations in the U.S. four fund and four allocations in the worldwide four fund. So that's eight. Well, actually, that's eight plus five is 13, 14, 15. You have 15 allocations. And if you click rebalance or you contribute new money that nudges towards the rebalance, it's going to push to get all of those all 15 of them back to where they need to be, um, which will result in also achieving this 25, 25, 25, 25 allocation. Um, so yeah, it will, it will uh, do a lot for you. So if you're dollar cost averaging into this four part high, it will be sending that money into each one of those areas to try to bring it back to the original. It's not going to get exactly back to the original because you're not asking it to totally rebalance. You're asking it to nudge toward what I want to have as my asset allocation. On, on the day of a contribution, it may well get you back to exactly the right allocation, depending on how much they've how much. Yeah. 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 And it, it, one of the really, really cool things about this is behavioral. When we ask people to rebalance manually, creating a spreadsheet, figuring out what they need to buy more of and what they need to sell, by the time you get done with that process, you realize you're, you're selling your winners and you're buying your losers. And it introduces this opportunity to second guess the process, even though objectively academics tell you it's a good thing to do that process of doing it manually introduces some emotions that are not helpful. Yep. And it, similarly, when you contribute new money and, and you're buying these things that are underperforming and you're buying them on the cheap and what a deal, right? I mean, that's fantastic for your long-term returns. Emotionally, if you were doing it manually, it would be tempting to go in and say, I don't know. I mean, the S&P 500 has been crushing it. Yeah. I think I should buy more of that. You're right. So the automation here, I, I know that M1 Finance can't call themselves robo-advisors because they're not offering advice, but they are offering a benefit that I think of when I think of robo-advisors, that's nudging you to better behavior. And it's because they're automating things and removing manual processes that you would have to do that might introduce emotion. And I, I think that that's a, a powerful and potentially underrated aspect of a tool like M1 Finance. And I suspect, uh, as, as a matter of fact, it, uh, it might be worth spending a few minutes right here I, I, I suspect the fact that Fidelity has, in essence, when I say copied, uh, they've got something that is similar called the uh, portfolio baskets or basket portfolios, one way or the other. Uh, and, and they are basically offering a very similar kind of a, uh, of a process. I, uh, I don't know if you've looked at it as I have not looked at it as carefully as I suspect that you either have or you will uh, as as you uh, dig deeper. But uh, I, I know that they're at this point, they're charging $399, $399, I believe it is. I think it's $499. $499 you're right, $499 to have access to the platform. 
instead of three ninety nine, or is that two ninety nine? <laughs> three dollars. Three dollars. All right. Uh, and and so it's a little more a little more expensive, but it is fidelity. And uh, and one of the things we haven't talked about is that one of the beauties of this process of rebalancing is not only that it's commission free if you're using ETFs, and by the way, commission free if you're using individual stocks as well, but but that there there's there is uh, the ability to work with with uh, partial shares. So now, if you want to just trade. $50 of something. You don't have to figure out, okay, how many shares do I could I buy with $50? You just say, I want $50 and it will buy you 3.621 shares or whatever it is. And that's a big deal. I mean, it's just a, it's another hurdle that keeps people from being able to do this easily. And if they're doing it at M1 and Fidelity, uh, remember... John Bogle was once the only guy offering index funds, but look at them today. They're all, most all of the major firms are offering index funds in one way or uh, or another. In fact, all of them do to the extent that, uh, the, that you can go get it through an ETF today that you couldn't uh, on the stock market before. Uh, so it's, it, this is wonderful, wonderful, help for that individual investor who not only has to kind of sort through the searching of what are, what are the right asset classes to be in, what are the right funds or ETFs to buy to be in those asset classes, when is the best time to rebalance? I mean, it goes on and on. And every time you put up those hurdles, there's just a certain number of people who are going to come to that hurdle and say, I don't want to go over that hurdle. But every time it's just got to push a button to get over, that changes your financial future. And I got to just mention one thing that that can't that I don't think can be forgotten in this process, and that is that uh, when I talk to college kids uh, about investing, and we talk about learning how to do it yourself, and uh, and 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 not having to hire an investment advisor to do it for you. And if you're putting away $6,000 a year, and if you get market returns on that $6,000 a year, and then you get into retirement and you, you, you make lower returns because you add fixed income and you take out 4% a year, well, at the end of a, uh, of a lifetime, it turns out that if you paid somebody 1% to help you through that process over, over a lifetime, that it it reduces your what you get to keep you and your family by about 3.5 million dollars and yet it would sound that 1% with your first 100 dollars we're only talking a dollar about a dollar <laughs> and then when it's a thousand dollars we're only talking 10 dollars i mean what's what's the problem here well the problem is those little tiny bits that you get to pick up and the reason that others get to pick it up for you is because you're not willing to clear these hurdles. And the and, and what Fidelity and M1, what they're doing is they're doing the they're, they're clearing that hurdle for you either free or almost free. And I think that is amazing. And and we have uh because of our relationship with M1, we've been offered something that I think are our audience would appreciate, and that's the opportunity to interview Brian Barnes, their right. uh, CEO and founder. And I think it would be interesting to hear his story about why he created the company. Uh, and it would also be interesting to be able to ask him some questions from our audience. So if you're using M1 Finance or you have questions about M1 Finance that maybe you're keeping you on the fence that you're wondering about, uh, we would love to get those questions and sometime in the next few months, we'll try and work out a schedule where we can get him and your questions together. And I think that would be a wonderful opportunity for, for us to expand on this in a way that is really tuned to what our listeners are curious about. 
I think that's going to be great fun, Chris. And one of the things that I think it's important to understand about M1 is that it, it's not the old fashioned bricks and mortar kind of a brokerage firm. Now, I ran into this. I wanted to open an account. What did I do? I sent them a check. Well, I don't take my check. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it, because they don't do business that way. It is all, it is all done on an automated basis uh, with a direct deposit from your bank. And I believe their SIPC uh, coverage is 3.5 million per account. Uh, and, uh, and other than that, from what I can see, they are, uh, when I say just another brokerage house, uh, you can buy and sell securities. They, this may be important to you. You don't buy and sell mutual funds, open end mutual funds, uh, through M1. You don't use M1 to buy a mutual fund from Vanguard or Fidelity you would buy an ETF uh, that you would buy at Vanguard or Fidelity or any of the brokerage firms, but their business is not dealing uh, in the mutual funds, the open-end mutual funds, but they do work with all of the ETFs. So as Chris has asked, please, we want your questions and comments uh, about M1 because... Uh, uh, I think it's going to be great fun to have Brian. And this is a man, by the way, uh, with a passion. Uh, and and uh, in a way, on, on the same path that we are, except he, he's, he's trying to build something that's going to last forever. And uh, and Chris and I are not sure what forever means. So so uh, there, is, there is a difference in that regard. We're getting closer to the expiration date of our yes. temporal forever. Yeah, the use by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect. There's <clears throat> hopefully there's more to it than that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to work on that. But Chris, as always, thank you for the great teaching work that you do and and helping uh, helping people clear these hurdles. Let's let's get them over all those hurdles and keep that money in their family. And I think that is. Uh, is a worthwhile effort for, for all of us. So thanks, and thanks to you, the viewers and the listeners. I hope that this is a, a, a podcast and, and, a, and a video that you will uh, share with others. And uh, in the video, there's an opportunity for you to go in there and ask questions and, and, and share comments uh, about this uh, presentation uh, as well. And uh, and I also look at those and and if, if I see a question I can help with, I just go right to work and, and answer the questions under the uh, under the video. So all the best to all of you. We're here to serve you and we serve best when we know what is your best in your best interest. Thank you.